praise the Lord. With the help of the Holy Ghost this morning, I'd like to preach on this thought. Just breathe. Just breathe. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and will do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. We thank you that you have all things in the palm of your hand, Lord. Lord, it doesn't matter how great the situation seems to us, but you have everything under control. Everything in our lives, everything in our brother's or sister's life, everything happening around the globe, you have it all in the palm of your hand. We give you praise and glory for it this morning. Amen. This morning, before I really start going, let us just step back, take one deep breath in, and one deep breath out. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I don't know if you've noticed it, but breathing is a very important part of your life and my life. I mean, it's almost practically essential. Because if somebody's not breathing, what do we consider them? They're probably dead. But the Bible states, everything that hath breath, if you're living, praise the Lord. The Bible declares that if there is breath in your body, that you need to praise the Lord. And unfortunately, sometimes difficult situations arise in each one of our lives. And they almost take our breath away. And if we're not careful, we can allow them to take our breath away. We can allow them to take our livelihood away. We can allow them to just consume our minds to the point where we're not living anymore. To the point where sometimes it's just hard to breathe. Maybe it feels like the situation has so engulfed us that we can't breathe. Not literally, but, you know, in that situation, there's just nowhere to move. But yet God says, in everything, give for thanks. Yeah. And let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. There's several situations I want to look at in the Bible this morning. The first one is found in the book of Acts chapter 16. If you want to turn there, you can. We'll, I'll be reading several verses from there. But there's a very prominent figure in this passage. In fact, he wrote the majority of the New Testament, and it's the Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18, the Bible reads, And it came to pass, as they went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, so she was a fortune teller. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, and show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, not just some days, but many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. Here we have Paul and Silas. And notice that they weren't coming from prayer because chances are the devil's not going to attack you when you're coming from prayer. If you're coming from prayer, you should already have the victory. But notice he attacked her, them as they were going to prayer. And there was nothing incorrect with what the woman was saying. These are servants of the Most High God. Now, it's like somebody coming up and saying, Brother Hayden, you're a Christian. You know, it's not what she was saying. It's the way she was saying. What she was doing was she was mocking them. She was making fun of them. These men are the, uh, um, these men are the ruler. These men are the servants of the most high God. And she was mocking them. She was making fun of them. How would you like every time you go to pray that someone's always coming against you? Or that somebody's making fun of you? The 
because that's exactly what was going on here. So we see Paul and Silas, they were going to do a good thing. They were going to God in prayer. But yet they were still met with opposition. You know, opposition is going to face us in life. The question is, how are we going to handle it? Because there's always going to be something. And if we're not careful, we can become so consumed with it or allow it to drive us to the point where we can't breathe anymore. It seems like there's no hope. There's nowhere to run to. God, are you even hearing my prayers? But in every situation, regardless of what we feel like, because we don't walk this walk of faith by feeling. We walk it by faith. Faith is not feeling. Faith is knowing with assurance who we have believed in, and if he said it in his word, it will come to pass. If God told you something in your life that you're going to face some difficult situations, be prepared. Sister Larian, you've already testified that to the other year, that you knew something big was coming financially, so you started saving. There was one day I was driving home from work. Everything was perfect. I had no financial problems. But God said, gave me clear instruction, don't worry about your finances. It would be until several months later that something would creep up. But you know, if God hadn't given me that word, that assurance, I might have been stumbling. I might have been saying, okay, what do I have to do to get money? Because you can only do so much. You do the best with what you have. But if it's not there, it's not there. There comes a point that if we know that we've been doing what we're supposed to, that all we can do is step back and allow God to handle the rest. And at the end of the month, the checkbook came out perfectly, even though it shouldn't have. So, in difficult times, we need to learn to breathe and remember where our faith lies. It doesn't lie in man, but rather it lies in God. And notice Paul's response. He didn't come against the damsel. He came against the spirit that was causing him the grief. He recognized where his problem lied. It wasn't the little girl. He knew there was a demon behind it, so he went straight to the sword. You know, we have to realize where things are coming from sometimes. And even in those situations, if we can't pinpoint it, we just have to place all our faith in God and say, He will work it out. I need to just breathe. I need to get some breath out because I know that God has it all in control. But that wasn't the end of Paul's situation. That was just the beginning, and that was the lightest part because those were just words. What do we say? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, that was exactly what came next. Paul and Silas, they were taken before the magistrates, and they were beaten. The Bible states in Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 23, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. When words weren't enough, they beat them with physical rocks. Paul and Silas' situation just went from bad to worse. All they were doing was going to pray. That is exactly what their goal was, day in and day out. But yet the devil came and mocked them every time they went to pray until finally Paul had enough. And why were they beaten? They weren't beaten for the sake that they cast the devil out of the girl. They were being because of the fact because they cast the demon out of the girl, they lost their financial stuff. These men, the people that owned the damsel, that was the fortune teller, they lost the money that she was bringing in from her telling them their fortunes, from telling other people their fortune. So Paul and Silas' situation, while a, a young girl got delivered from a demon, now they're being beaten. Sometimes our situations go from bad to worse. But we cannot forget to breathe. We cannot forget to praise God. Because while victory may sometimes come in prayer, as it did with um, Samuel's mother, nine times out of ten, if we've experienced 
experienced victory has come from praising God. How many people have gone the baptism of the Holy Ghost by begging God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Probably nine times out of ten they got it because they ended up praising God and thanking Him that they were going to get it. It didn't come in the difficult time, but it came in the praise. It came in the worship. Now, sometimes we just need to take a step back, take a deep breath, breathe, and praise God that no matter what the situation looks like, he has it already worked out. Because sometimes things not only go from bad to worse, they go to epic. Because for Paul and Silas, it wasn't just enough to be beaten. But they were cast into prison. And they weren't just cast into prison. They were cast into the dungeon. That part, the innermost part, where the worst of the punishments were deal, dash, um, deal down, where people were chained, where they might have been thrown down into a space just the size of their body and forced to lay there. The Bible says that Paul and Silas, they were bound hand and foot. So not only were they cast into the most secure part of the prison, not only were they cast into the worst part of the prison, but they were bound to make sure that they weren't going anywhere. Sometimes life goes from bad to worse to epic. And if we wanted to, we could sit down and we could say, woe is me, woe is me. We could even cry out, God, where are you? But sometimes we just need to step back, take a deep breath, and praise God regardless. The Bible goes on to state that the jailer being thrust with such a charge in Acts chapter 16, 24, put them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in a stock. And in Acts 16:26, and suddenly, the Bible states, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everybody's violence were loosed. So we find that they were shackled as well. They weren't going anywhere. But yet, like Paul and Silas, in our darkest hour, we need to praise God. We need to just step back, take a deep breath, and praise God. Regardless of the situation, it doesn't matter if we've been beaten. It doesn't matter if it feels like we've been put through the ringer. It doesn't matter if our hands and feet feel like they're tied. The Bible states, at midnight, at midnight, what's so special about midnight? Midnight's always the darkest hour. That's when all the bad stuff supposedly happened. What's the doomsday clock waiting to strike? Midnight. Midnight is always the darkest part of the night. And sometimes we are in the darkest spot it feels like in our life. It feels like there's nothing else that can be go wrong. It feels like there's nothing that can be accomplished. There's nothing I can even do to move the situation. But at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sent praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. When there is nothing left to do, when life has gone from bad to worse to epic, we just need to take a step back. We need to breathe. Take a deep breath and just praise God. Right. If there's nothing else that we can do, if we've already cried out to God in prayer, and it was like there's no thing else that we can physically do, we just need to step back and praise God. And the Bible states what the result of Silas and Paul prayer on uh, praising God was. The jailer and his family were saved 
and they were baptized. Well, let me back up. First of all, they were freed. In Acts chapter 16, verse 35, and when it was day, the magistrates sent the sur um, surgeons saying, let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told the saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. When Paul and Silas finally sat back and praised God, everything changed. Their entire situation changed. The prison was shaken. Their bonds were loosed. It was put in motion that they should be set free. But more importantly is the spiritual side. Acts chapter 16, verses 28 down to 34. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had made them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced the living God with all his house. Sometimes things in our life, they happen. And they happen out of reason for nothing that we've got. And sometimes they go from bad to worse to epic. But maybe God is just looking to use that. That someone may be saved from eternal damnation. When we look at this passage here, the jailer and his entire house were saved. Not only were they saved, but they were baptized. Baptism being an outward sign to everyone around us that I put off my old life, I'm living the life of Christ. That means that they were publicly declaring, I'm not serving the gods of the uh, Greeks anymore or the Romans. I'm done. I'm not worshiping my ancestors anymore. I am done. I have turned over a new leaf. An act that in some cultures even today is so powerful that people lose their lives because they are putting off the gods of their fathers. They are pushing away from their society and their traditions to become a Christian. Paul and Silas' life took a change for the worse for a while when they just took a breath and they were able to breathe God got into the situation and moved in ways that they could never dream or imagine a supernatural shaking of the jail a supernatural loosing of everyone's bonds and the salvation of the jailer and his entire family not only that but once again they regained their freedom we can look at other examples in the Bible. Daniel was a man who went to prayer every day. But he had enemies. And they tricked the king in deciding a decree that anyone who doesn't worship their gods would be cast into the lion's den. Can you imagine being cast into a den and surrounded by a bunch of lions? Where would your faith be? You know, sometimes in life, people will rise against us. Sometimes they're family members. Sometimes they're friends that we have known our entire life. And they backbite against us. They tell lies. They cause division. But you realize that if we would just take a step back, we would just take a breath and just praise God, we would realize that God is right there with us. He has never left us. He has never forsaken us.
but we need to get ourselves out of the equation. We need to get our fears and doubts out of the equation because it's our fears and doubts that hinder God from moving. Why wasn't Jesus able to hear anybody from his home uh, do miracles like he did everywhere else in his hometown? The Bible says because of their own belief. When we allow fear and doubt to creep in, it hinders God from moving. Sometimes we just need to take a step back, take a deep breath, and praise God, knowing that it has it all worked out for our good. And sometimes it's not even always situations. Life in general sometimes can just make us feel blah, empty. And it was thinking about Genesis chapter 1. In verse 2, the Bible states, And the Spirit was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There's lots of people in this world that they feel empty. They feel blah. And if we're not careful and we let the death enemy slip in sometimes, sometimes he can make us feel blah and empty and make us feel like that, that we're worthless, we're not of any value, what are we even doing in the first place? When those things arise, we need to take a step back and take a deep breath. Because in the beginning, the earth was without form and it was without void. But that didn't hinder the Spirit of God. When God moves, He brings everything into place. When God moves, He brings everything into place into perspective. He puts everything right where it's supposed to be. Not always how we think they should go, but he does it in his timing and his way. But we need to take a step back and we need to allow the Holy Ghost to move in our lives and we need to simply just praise God for what he's doing and what he will do. <coughs> because if we're not careful, the devil would love to be little us make us feel like we're not really part of the family of God. Oh, why do we even deserve to belong there? What have we done to deserve to be part of the family of God? But we need to take a step back and praise God and realize that we have value. We have been bought with a price. It cost God the old, his only son that we may spend eternity with him. Our lives are precious, and there's not a price tag that can be placed upon them. And we need to step back and take a deep breath and realize who we are in Christ. He has taken away our righteousness, which is us filled in rags, and given us his own righteousness. He's taken away the things where we were once far from God, He's brought us into the family of God. He's not just brought us into his house, but he's brought us into his family. We're not just servants, but we're heirs with Jesus Christ. We're precious in the sight of God. As Sister Beth comes to the piano, the Bible declares, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. What's the main Hebrew name for the Lord? Yahweh. The interesting thing about the name Yahweh, though, is there are no constants in it in the Hebrew. They were added in. It's been said that the name of God is so precious that that's the reason that the whole name Yahweh was never completely written out because it was sacred. But a lot of rabbis point out this. When you look at those letters, why? Why H W H? Notice your breathing pattern. Those consonants represent breathing in. Y-H, you have to inhale, W-H, 
question has to come. The name of God is a breath. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You realize that inadvertently, every time somebody breathes with that mindset, they are breathing in the name of God. They are breathing Yahweh, whether they realize it or not. With every breath they take, they are admitting that there is a creator, that there is a supreme God, and his name is Yahweh. His name is Jehovah. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is supreme. He is omnipotent. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter what our situations are like this morning. But I feel that God is just like somebody this morning. Just breathe. It doesn't matter what your situation looks like. Just breathe. Take a step back. Take a breath. And just praise me. For you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And there is no God like God. It is easy. 